so easy to ride, uh, so fast, uh, so smooth, so powerful that it was, uh, compared with the other motorcycle, possible to move. The Africa Twin changed the course of adventure bikes forever. Its legendary reliability set a new standard for adventure bikes. The Africa Twin represents adventure in its most simplistic form. This is why the Africa Twin is the greatest of all adventure bikes. XR 550R gave Honda their first win in the Paris the Car Rally. In the following years, the BMW R80GS, with its multi cylinder boxer engine and low center of gravity, would push motorcycle speeds beyond the capability of the Japanese single cylinders. The answer was to build multi-cylinder bikes. Speeds on single-cylinder bikes in the desert flats reach 160 km per hour, as opposed to the multi-cylinder bikes such as the BMW R80 GS achieving 180 km per hour. There was a couple of things that Honda wanted to do in order to win the Paris Dakar. The new bike had to be light and compact, it had to be capable of 180 km per hour to compete with the BMW and it needed to have a cruising speed of 95 miles per hour or 150 km per hour. It had to be easy to ride, reliable, easy to work on, stable at speed, fuel efficient, it had to also get 280 miles per tank and have a low center of gravity. The gas tank proved to be a challenge. This was a saddle type of fuel tank that extended down on both sides and required a fuel pump to push the fuel up to the carb. It also had a second sump guard gas tank. As a result of all of these requirements, Honda came up with the NXR and it entered the 1986 Dakar. It competed with the BMW GS that was now a 1040cc and the Kajiva Elephant V-Twins and the Yamaha FZ750 which was inspired from the road-going FZ750. The Honda could not match Yamaha or BMW with horsepower. But Honda proved to be the best by being the most balanced and agile. Nouveau claimed first place and Giles Lelay grabbed second. The NXR was built by Honda's racing company, HRC, and it began the project in 1984. At the time, the Paris Dakar was still very new and Honda sent Honda engineers to the Paris Dakar rally in 1985 to learn what they could about this race. Even though the NXR750 was a purpose-built racer aimed at winning the Paris Dakar, this was the inspiration for the Africa Twin. Honda discovered to sell bikes you had to win races. So Honda on its first try won first and second place in the Paris Dakar and went on to win four times consecutively. No other manufacturer was able to succeed at this rate. The Honda NXR 750 started the trend of making bikes look like Paris Dakar replicas. Soon thereafter, the Yamaha Tenere came out with the Paris Dakar replica of its own. The NXR had a 45 degree 779cc V-twin with a 90 degree crankshaft and 70 horsepower at 7,000 RPMs. It also featured 
a super large tank at 15 gallons of fuel capacity. This was a saddle type front fuel tank to keep the center of gravity low and a mesh covering for the headlight. Six speed transmission and 11.8 inches of wheel travel in the front and 16.6 .6 in the rear. And it weighed 419 pounds. Not only did the NXR 750 win the pair of the car and stopped BMW's monopoly of winning the car races, it was also the first water-cooled motorcycle that has ever won the pair of the car. The Honda NXR 750 was not the first multi-cylinder bike for Honda. Honda had already a template for the Africa Twin. It was the XLV 750R. which essentially was the mother of the Africa Twin. The XLV was Honda's first adventure style bike, but it wasn't considered to be a very good dirt bike. This bike is extremely rare to find. It's a shaft driven air cooled V-twin and was on sale in 1983. But unfortunately the XLV 750R was not very successful. The Honda XLV 750R that predates the Africa Twin was the bike that Honda was trying to sell at the time. In the 1980s, most dual sport motorcycles had only one cylinder and weighed about 120 to 150 kilograms. Compared to them, the XLV weighed 220 kilograms. This bike at launch was introduced in a motocross track and it seemed to be very unfitting for the bike because it weighed so much and several journalists crashed this bike the honda xlv 750r's designation was the rd01 it was honda's first dual sport motorcycle with two non-parallel cylinders it was an air oil cooled v-twin engine with hydraulic valve tappets and a shaft drive. Those two construction features make the XLV a very low maintenance motorcycle. The distinctive air scoops mounted below the fuel tank on either side of the motorbike provided additional cooling for the rear cylinder. In 1985, a revised version of the XLV 750R was introduced, bearing the additional designation F. This model had six less horsepower but it had an improved automatic cam tensioners improved carburetor setup among other modifications interesting enough this bike was sold in the uk and in europe but was not sold in germany probably because the demand was very low due to the mainly negative press the xlv received there in 1986 the production of the xlv 750r the RD01 was discontinued. The RD designation is a little bit confusing because it's not attributed just to the Africa Twin. The RD02 is also the NX650 Dominator and the XRV650-750 Africa Twin, they are RD03, RD04, RD07. The XR650L is the RD06. The SLR650 FX650 Vigor are the 09. XL650 XL700 V Transalp, that's the RD10, RD11, RD13. At the time the XLV 750R sold in Europe, Honda was racing XR600 singles with custom made gas tanks holding about 9 gallons or more. The gas tank on the XLV had a modest 5.1 gallons, more than enough for a lengthy on-off-road tour with the bike's 44 miles per gallon average. But Honda realized that in order to sell bikes, you had to win races. It turns out that winning races is the perfect marketing strategy. 
Even though the Honda XLV 750R was only in production for a few years, we forget the importance of this bike. It provided the basis for what is known now as the Honda Transalp and the Africa Twin. The Honda NXR 750 won four consecutive wins at the Paris Dakar. It was time to step down. By 1988, Honda had a new bike, the first Honda Africa Twin. This new Honda featured a 650cc 49 horsepower engine. And to prove that this bike was a great trail bike, Honda started a new initiative. It was called Fit the Africa Twin to the Car. It offered privateers a Africa Twin that was slightly modified. Out of 150 applicants, Honda gave 50 modified Africa Twins to privateers to compete in the Paris Dakar special category known as Marathon. Because of the growing involvement of factory built prototypes, the Paris Dakar added a second motorcycle category that had production derived bikes, the Marathon class. Honda realized that this was a great way of selling their Honda Africa Twin that was now on the market. So they withdrew the NXR 750 and started to promote the new Honda Africa Twin. This came to be known as the Honda Africa Twin Marathon. Of these 50 Africa Twins, 18 reached the finish line. And in the following year, in 1989, Honda set up another 50 Honda Africa Twins. Slightly different from the previous series. In 1990, only eight of these Marathon Africa Twins were built. These were the 750cc versions. The Marathon series are quite unique because you could not modify the bike very much. You couldn't modify the frame or the engine. So Honda had to have a lot of confidence in their bikes. Honda did make modifications to mainly the fuel capacity. It went from 25 liters to 40 liters in the front and it had a 17 liter tank in the rear. That's 57 liters or 15 US gallons. It also had two liters of portable water located in the engine guard. These bikes were also given a special unique designation of six in the frame and in the engine number. The first official production Africa Twin was the XRV 650 RD03, sold in 1988 to 1989. Designer Tomonori Mogi wanted a bike that resembled the race version of the NXR 750 as much as possible. It featured a 747cc liquid-cooled 52-degree twin, twin aluminum radiators, quick-release fairings, a bash guard, and a tri-color HRC color scheme. The first Africa Twin debuted as a limited production model of only 500 units. It was developed based on feedback from the very popular and successful NXR 750 which was a fully equipped off-road racing machine that won the Paris Dakar four times consecutively. The Africa Twin sent shockwaves throughout the market with its 547cc liquid-cooled V-Twin mounted in a massive frame. In many ways, it had the same sort of impact as the arrival of the Honda CB754. Because it was so popular, it continued to be refined and sold in limited numbers through 2002. Tomonoro Mogi was in charge of its design and gives a candid account of the work involved. Quote, At the time, Honda was aiming to expand its market share in the flagship class of growing adventure touring segment of the market, which had become extremely popular in Europe. Our current single-cylinder model stacked up well against rival machines yet couldn't quite take the lead. Then the XLV 750R debuted in the European market. 
The XLV750R was designed by Honda R&D Group that was mostly involved with on-road models. With its V-twin engine, shaft drive, and excessive unsprung weight, it had a lot of weak points and was quite heavy, so nobody could really consider it to be viable in the dirt." End quote. Mogi also noted that the Paris Dakar had a rather large influence on the motorcycle buy-in trends at the time. Tomonori Mogi said, I took part in creating the clay model mock-ups of the NXR. It mounted fuel tanks at both the front and the rear, and I remember making the giant clay models after being told to tackle the job with the intent of achieving a huge 100 liter fuel capacity. The design section wasn't involved in modeling HRC racers at the time, but still attempted design work on the NXR. There was no effort at the time to directly connect our work to production models. The idea was to win the rally. We proceeded to study design factors by borrowing an NXR from HRC. Only a few of the factory machines had been built, so we borrowed the actual machine that had just come back from winning the race. On parking it at our work site, we found it exuded the true aura of an NXR racer that has just survived Africa and outrun everyone else in the desert rally. But the NXR gave a muscular impression, Mogi quote. The concept adapted for the fuel tank was a sloping style that reaches down to the flanks of the cylinders. The same as for the NXR. Usually the fuel feeds down to the carburetors from the fuel tank. But in this case, the tank was positioned lower than the carburetors. So a fuel pump was added. The tank's bottom plate is unusually wide due to it straddling the double cradle frame, which widens rearward from the steering head. Fuel tanks are generally made by welding a three-piece construction consisting of the bottom plate and left and right outer plates. However, in this case of the Africa Twin, the width and shape of the frame required four pieces, with the bottom plate also segmented into two pieces. Without this construction, the parts couldn't be formed in the press operation. Mogi, quote, Fuel tanks at the time were made at the Hamamatsu factory, and in the case of the Africa Twin, the hulking size of its 24-liter tank only barely fit through the factory paint line. There were no suspension hangers large enough to fit the tanks. The production plant suffered a lot of headaches trying to fabricate the specialized item. The Africa Twin proved to be technically superior in terms of handling ease and readily usable engine characteristics according to production bike experts. And in this way, the Africa Twin later established itself as a milestone machine among on-off-road machines. The name Africa Twin was decided upon based on the comments of one of the European sales staff who said, it must be a real Africa Twin if it has a V-Twin engine that raced through Africa. Another example of demanding standards were the quick-release fasteners used to assemble the side body panels on the Africa Twin. These were quite expensive, and we were told they were cost prohibitive, but the NXR used those fasteners, so we insisted the Africa Twin also had to have the same fasteners. The XRV650 Honda Africa Twin from 1988 to 1989 is the most sought after Africa Twin because it most resembles the true racer from the Paris Dakar. But after 1989, Honda came out with the RD04, the XRV750. From 1990 to 1992, it got a bump up in horsepower but it also weighed a little bit more. The previous 650 Honda Africa Twin that was built by HRC 
only weighed 185 kilograms, as opposed to the new 750 that weighed 207 but got a bump up in horsepower from 57 horsepower to 62 horsepower. This was a much better bike for road use and generally used by commuters in Europe. This bike was invented for the Paris Dakar, but it was much more at home in Paris. While the Africa Twin was not the only competition for the big trailing market at the time, Yamaha also had the Yamaha Super Tenere 750, BMW had the R80GS, and Suzuki had the DR Big. In a shootout test between the Honda XRV 750, the Super Tenere, the R80GS, and the DR Big from Suzuki, they consider the Africa Twin, it was without a doubt the best. It managed to do everything well, from posing to cruising, without doing it in a boring way. An air or refinement and quality surrounded the bike. The engine, for example, came closest to matching the Super 10's top end, yet was the smoothest of all four. The Honda Africa Twin cruised at 100 miles an hour. By this time, the Super 10 Ray was still good for another 10 miles per hour or so, but sounded though as if it wasn't keen to attempt that feat. The Africa Twin hummed where the Super Tenere rattled. Lower down the rev range, the Africa Twin came into its own. Between four and 7,000, the others didn't stand a chance. Riding the Honda on the open road, this mid-range advantage became obvious as soon as the bikes lined up to overtake a truck. The Super Tenere rider downshifted a gear and blasted past a flurry of slapping valves. The DR rider got his chin on the tank to punch through the slipstream and the Africa Twin rider just opened up the throttle. On the Africa Twin, everything seemed easy. For a bike as heavy as the Africa Twin, it felt surprisingly sharp round corners. It never felt as chuckable as the DR, but moving from the Super Tenere to the Africa Twin, the consensus was that the handling was not as firm, but nevertheless more accurate. The whole unit felt stiffer, despite sharing the Super Tenere steel cradle type frame. In 1993, it saw its first major redesign, including new frame, bodywork plastics, fuel tank, and engine modifications, and the lower seat. And it only gained a little bit more weight. In 1996, it gained an improved seat and clutch, larger silencer, modified upper fairing and luggage rack, but also lost some of the adjustability in the rear shock. And in 2003, the production for the legendary Africa Twin ceased. forward 13 years since 2003 and there were rumors circulating that Honda might be bringing back the Honda Africa Twin. Honda at the time had the Honda NC700X and the CV500X. While these bikes were great little machines, didn't have a proper adventure bike. While Honda was one of the first to come out with the adventure bikes along with Yamaha and BMW, they missed out for about 13 years and the adventure market went on without them. And of course, North Americans never got to see the original Africa Twins and rumors were that possibly it did not have that awesome V-Twin that the old Africa Twins had. The official rumors started in La Cazzetta dello Sporto. The general manager of Honda Italy told them that a new V-Twin adventure was en route and we might be seeing it in 2015. Eventually, it was confirmed by Honda about the CRF1000L. No longer it had the XRV designation and now it was a CRF. It came in standard ABS and DCT using the technology from the NC700X. Yutaka Yamakura of Honda Motorcycle R&D Center 
was put in charge of the Africa Twins chassis and bodywork design. Yamakura was key in development and creating the concept and determining the direction based on the predecessor model. Yamakura joined Honda when the Africa Twin was still in Honda's lineup. He held out for someday to make the new Africa Twin and dreaming of taking charge of its development. Yamakura started riding his own Africa Twin in the company in-house enduro races. He competed with XR100, CRF250s, XR250s. His big Africa Twin finished the races in style, impressively showing off its riding, ease, and confident control. And the team purchased another second-hand Africa Twin for development purposes. An interesting phenomena happened. One after another teammate started buying their own Africa Twins. Akihiro Lida joined the team for the Africa Twin to develop the engine on this new bike. Yamakura explains the reason Lida joined the team. The team needed an engine design specialist who was capable of designing small and lightweight engines from scratch. The team looked at the Africa Twin's history and known qualities and took a good look at the original V-Twin configuration, but finally decided it's best not to cling to the past in their selection. It turned out that the best engine for the job was a parallel twin engine rather than a variation of the original V-Twin. Displacement was originally set at 1000 cc's. In view of the fact that this provided the best balance between needed output and lightweight compact proportions. The earlier Africa Twin employed a V-Twin engine that at the time was regarded as an ideal in terms of size, weight, and power feel. However, current state-of-the-art technologies make it possible for more lightweight and compact construction and a feeling of power that still provides a sense of being highly controllable. Akihiro Komatsu was in charge of Honda's motorcycle R&D center. Quote, I engage designers in Japan, the United States, and Europe in a sort of design competition. I asked each of them to sketch out their own ideas of how the new Africa Twin should look. Lita, after extensive research, settled on a 270 degree offset crankshaft. This irregular combustion interval provided the attractive performance they were looking for, as well as a pulsating feel while also effectively canceling out secondary vibration. Tetsuya Kudo, while not part of the team, wanted to take this prototype for a ride. Kudo, in years past, had taken charge of development of such bikes as the Honda RC30, the NR750, the CB1300 series, and the CB1100. After the initial ride, Kudo was not impressed. He felt the bike was too touring oriented and not enough off-road performance. And soon the production schedule loomed into view. The first prototype of the CRF 1000 Africa Twin was revealed at the 2014 IECMA International Motorcycle Show in Milan, Italy. This prototype was heavily disguised with camouflage and covered in mud, so it did not reveal any specific details about the new motorcycle, other than the visual details such as the parallel twin engine, dual disc brakes, and ABS, 21 inch front wheel and 18 inch rear wheel on spoked wire rims. And the new era of the Africa Twin was born. While the new Africa Twin was a complete redesign, it still retained the look and lineage that the old Africa Twin had. With Honda's marketing slogan, True Adventure, you could tell that Honda wanted riders to venture out into the unknown. The old Africa Twin did that with consumers in Europe, going from Europe into Africa for their holidays. The Africa Twin started the entire Paris the Car replica craze and pushed all bikes to follow. From its beginnings, 
as a NXR750 racer in the powers of the car into the Africa Twin 650 marathon and followed by the very popular Africa Twin 750 which still is a world-class touring machine the new CRF 1000 and CRF 1100 stay true to the calling of adventure what made the Africa Twin loved by both on and off-road touring fans the world over was that it maintained the highest standards to the end, with craftsmanship as the result. If you stuck around until the end, thank you. And if you enjoy the content, make sure to hit that subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It keeps us motivated to do more of these historical videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.